Hi, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Digital Champions. I'm your host, Susan St. Dennis, and I'm so excited to have on the show today, Xiao with Westerland Marketing. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to be here. Nice to meet you, Susan. Nice to meet you as well. We had a great conversation before starting the interview. I feel bad or our audience isn't going to get to see what we were talking about, but we have another interesting conversation that we'll have here about working with small businesses and the way that the resurgence of COVID has been affecting the, uh, the, the marketing world. So real quickly, before we get into that conversation, why don't you introduce me to Westerland Marketing and what you guys do? Sure. Uh, Western Marketing is a boutique digital marketing agency. We specialize in small business SEO and content marketing, which goes right into social media ads and media buying. We have a very unique radiation content model that's parallel towards the popular keyword clustering model a lot of people are using nowadays. It allows small business to fulfill their marketing needs almost four times more efficiently compared to older models, which means you save on your budget four times more efficiently as well. And we really try to help every business we work with to truly distinguish themselves from their competitors with content that's actually authentic but optimized at the same time. So you are not selling just like another LinkedIn influencers or Instagram influencer that's really just repeating after other people. And in the end, you become a broken record. We are anti-broken record. We're all about identity and storytelling. That is wonderful to hear. It is really easy for a lot of small businesses to get lost uh, within the crowd. Um, it's, it's, it's easy to kind of end up in this this uh, oversaturation. So just talk to me a little bit about working within the small you know, business sector, working with these kinds of companies. What are some of the biggest struggles that you face with working with these kinds of companies specifically? What are some unique issues that you see within that area? So like with most small to medium businesses, of course, budget is our biggest concern because there is no way you can compete against large media players with our small business budget, nor would it make any sense. And another very common struggle we face is when you look around for, you know, digital marketing best practices, how should I run ads? Most of those suggestions are designed for larger businesses or more established enterprises or small businesses who actually has a solid funding background. That is now the case with at least 80% of the small businesses who are actually needing help with digital marketing. So it comes down to working with a consultant or a professional who actually realizes what you see from other people, what's considered the best strategy, may not be the best strategy at all. And as a small business with limited budget and resource and time, because often the owner takes over part of the marketing responsibilities, we need to tailor the strategy specifically to everybody's circumstances. Each time a business says, okay, I would like to promote myself in the digital world. What should I do? Instead of just saying, oh yeah, let's start with SEO. Let's start posting five times a week because that's, is no longer suitable for anybody. Absolutely. You know, and that last point, I think is really important to, to kind of cling on to, uh, you know, you had mentioned before we started the interview, how you noticed how rapidly uh, digital marketing was growing and changing here. And, it, and I think this really was brought on by COVID as everyone moved into remote working situations. There was this push where people really needed to get their digital marketing under control. So, you know, because of how rapidly these strategies change and social media itself, the trends are constantly shifting, how do you stay on top of these changing strategies? How do you make sure that you're providing the most updated methods mm -hmm. to your client, make sure that they stay on top of the game? Uh, staying connected with our professional colleague and staying tuned into, you know, most of the authority channels in the marketing world is definitely critical. Uh, Westerland is actually a member of the American Marketing Association. We also belong to the Chicago chapter since I'm physically based in Chicago. Um, for our clients, basically, we took the learning piece completely out because it is our job to educate ourselves, either from industry leaders, from other professional colleagues, because they might face a challenge we have never faced before. And it's through conversation. We all work out new solutions together. So staying engaged and involved in the digital marketing community while tuning into the actual helpful resources that is credible, that is constantly being updated, 
following major channels, Facebook, Google, Instagram, these official newsletters are definitely important to stay on top of. I think, yeah, we leverage our community and build our own knowledge bank to make sure we're actually up to date. And when we feel like we might be lagging behind, the best way to do is just to AMA is a really, really good resource. And almost all the marketing professionals in there knows, oh, it's time for us to do a little get together webinar or seminar because it is time for us to exchange in power so everybody can stay on top of everything. Absolutely. And you know what? I really appreciate you bringing up AMA because I feel like I've noticed for a lot of uh, marketing companies, media companies out there, small ones, um, they, they fail to realize that there are these associations out there, these groups that they can be a part of to really help them stay on top of the game and connect with other companies and to stay competitive. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like a lot of people fail to realize that these resources are available and it is very useful, like you were, you, were, mm-hmm. you know, explaining to stay on top of these trends. So my last question for you before we uh, bring this interview to a close, why don't you talk to me a little bit about how you feel, you know, we're seeing this resurgence with Omicron and, and all that jazz, whoop de do we're all so thrilled that that's happening. How do you feel you, you are better prepared for dealing uh, with this resurgence? Um, you know, COVID itself caught people really off guard. And now that we're kind of seeing a spike again, then it could, you know, go back down and be under control much quicker than COVID was. But how do you feel like you're better prepared for dealing with these kinds of situations now? So like I told you earlier, Susan, I actually came from the traditional PR and publication background and I transitioned over to digital. Um, Our company went 100% remote actually when pandemic first started. But having that traditional PR background taught me a lot other digital marketers might ignore is, yes, COVID has caused more than one wave of panic. There are a lot of business going into the digital, 100% digital marketing mode because of what happened to the brick and mortar businesses. But it's important to understand the fact that just because there are resurgence doesn't mean people's crave to in-person business and events and interactions has gone away. So I would say Westerland is definitely better prepared for this because when we look at marketing, even if we're planning for a digital marketing strategy, we will still look at your physical and traditional marketing aspect because it is important. The longer we are suffering from this pandemic chaos, the more people would cling on to relationships and emotions. And a huge part of that is face-to-face interaction. And by understanding that and factoring that into our strategy, we're able to help small businesses effectively build a human-centric digital marketing strategy. It's always driven by content, but it's not just driven by any content. It's content that would either complement to what every in-person communication we're able to reserve or happen in place of that physical communication because of different quarantine policies. And we'll make sure you're still connect with your audience on an actual human level. Instead of many businesses go panically into digital marketing and they start losing that human touch. And that is very sad for both sides. Absolutely. You know what? And, and it's so important that you bring up that experience with traditional marketing, traditional PR, because a lot of people are really quick to say that it's dead. Uh, but those skill sets are still really important, uh, even within the digital field. That's often the foundation for a lot of people's understanding of how to operate within the digital marketing world. Xiao, thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciated hearing from you. It was a really awesome conversation. Thank you so much, Susan, for having me. I had a wonderful time as well. Wonderful already. And to everybody watching at home, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Digital Champions. If you'd like to learn more about Xiao and her business, you can check her out at dailyadbrief.com. We'll see you next time. Simplify presents addressable CTV, combining the power of TV with the targeting and attribution of digital. Simplify's addressable CTV delivers massive reach with the ability to scale without sacrificing precision. TV buyers can generate incremental reach with household level targeting, frequency controls, reporting, and insights. To learn more about Simplify's addressable CTV and what it can do for your clients, visit simply.fi.